Only one state does not criminalize first-time drinking and driving offenses. Wisconsin also boasts the nation's highest level of binge drinking. That's according to a 2012 study. Peter Greenberg graduated from the University of Wisconsin. He's been following this story for years, so he went to the state capitol to investigate the DUI divide. Peter, good morning. Good morning, Gail. First-time drunk drivers in Wisconsin are typically given a fine and released after they sober up. Those incidents related to excessive alcohol cost an estimated $6.8 billion each year. That's $1,200 for every man, woman, and child in the state. Wisconsin Day! It's game day at the University of Wisconsin. And these Badger fans are off to an early start. While there's no alcohol allowed in the stadium, the party outside is in full swing before 10 a.m. Go Badgers! Tailgates like this will happen all weekend across the country. But Wisconsin is the only state where first-time drinking and driving offenders will not be criminally prosecuted. We have one of the biggest problems in the nation, and yet we have some of the few solutions to correct it. Wisconsin State Senator Tim Carpenter co-authored four of six bills this year to toughen drinking and driving laws. None have made it to the Senate for a vote. The dirty secret is the Assembly passed legislation last time. It came in front of the Senate Transportation Committee, but then Senator Fitzgerald wouldn't schedule any of the bills. Scott Fitzgerald is majority leader of the state Senate. If you had everyone appear before the judge, uh, it would be very difficult, I think, for the system to deal with that right now. But what you just said, if I interpret the numbers correctly, right. that means there are so many people drunk out there, they can't handle the system. Yeah, so if you went to a felony conviction, I'm not sure what difference that would make. We're trying to take an approach that we think will be more measured, and, and the way to do that is to get these people clean. The last time that we were all together as a family was in November. Of Beyond the politics, but often in the debate, are the families forced into advocacy. You were immediately disrupted in the worst way. Immediately disrupted. We got Judy and Paul Jenkins and lost called. their daughter Jennifer, granddaughter Courtney, and the unborn granddaughter Jennifer was carrying in this 2008 accident. The man who killed them, Mark Benson, was sentenced to 30 years in prison. It was his fourth offense for operating a vehicle while intoxicated, and he received among the state's stiffest penalties. So that's a pretty current picture of them. But the Jenkins say mandatory minimum sentences on first-time offenders may have prevented this tragedy. If you get pulled over for a DUI or OWI, OWI. what happens? They write you a traffic ticket. But you don't lose your license. No. No. You don't lose your car. No. No. And you don't go to prison. No. No. You don't even have to show up in court to answer the ticket. So, Langdon Street, Fraternity Row. Julia Sherman is the coordinator for the Wisconsin Alcohol Policy Project. She says despite little action in the state legislature, progress is happening in town after town and through volunteer programs like police saturation patrols. These are task force. They let the public know when they're going to be out on the road. It's a show of force. It's a show of force, but also they can pull over anyone that breaks any traffic laws. And in a state that also prohibits police sobriety checkpoints, saturation patrols have shown success. Since Brown County launched the federally funded program in 2011, year-over-year -year reductions have been realized in alcohol-related crashes, injuries, and deaths. More and more communities are adopting things, and it's going to come down to the communities lead the way, and then the leaders in Madison are going to end up following them. But Tim Carpenter, in the state legislature for 31 years, says any significant change to Wisconsin's drinking and driving laws will take some more time. Give me the reality check. Is anything ever going to change? To be honest with you, I don't see meaningful drunk driving legislation pass this session or next session, probably after the next gubernatorial election in 2018. So we're seeing nothing for at least three years? At, at least. Now, a new bill was just introduced this week, but it's considered a compromise bill because even if it passes, it would only revoke a person's driver's license, license after five DUIs. Peter. It's called oh. five strikes, you're out. Oh, my gosh. This is so discouraging and maddening at the same time. Yeah. And so. the problem is you have people out there driving with eight, nine, ten DUIs whose licenses have already been revoked, including the man who killed the Jenkins daughter. Well, hopefully things will change. Peter, thank you so much. You got it.